Welcome everybody. This is the Maine Medical Center Ultrasound Guided Peripheral Vascular Access Module by your host Brent Fowler and also Peter Croft is somewhere in the woodwork. So to get started, I um, wanted to talk about something that can really bog down a workup with a patient and that is getting access both for IV and as well as for blood work. Generally this isn't something that uh, providers do. And so we need to bring something to the table that the nurses haven't already tried uh, because they're the professionals at it. And so when we're asked to do this, we need something different, which can be something like ultrasound or using numbing or trying atypical veins such as the EJ. And let's start off by talking about anatomy. In this selfie, you can clearly see the median cubital vein as well as the basilic vein and the cephalic vein. And in um, general peripheral IVs, the median cubital is going to be the money shot. But I found that in patients that have difficult access, uh, the basilic vein is, is truly a game changer. Now, if we're talking body at Maine Medical Center, uh, it's not always uh, a perfect one. And um, you don't always have the same landmarks that you would normally have. And so for that reason, I do like the basilic vein, even in IV drug abusers or in patients who are dehydrated and you lose all the landmarks, uh, say due to body habitus, the basilic vein is generally still plump, un unused, and uh, just begging for cannulization. Let's talk next about the setup. It's all about the preparation in this somewhat difficult and um, not very used skill. And so what I like to do is first get all the necessary tools together beforehand. I ask the nurses what they use and what they need, and they'll tell you exactly what in your shop uh, you're going to want to have. I uh, grab a tegaderm, saline flush, a um, tourniquet, some lidocaine with uh, either an insulin, 29 gauge or 31 gauge, um, very small single use syringe. And then I'll grab also the ability to draw some blood work because generally if the nurses are having difficulty with IV cannulization then they'll also have difficulty with blood. Get my angiocath together as well as the uh, the blue what we have a lure lock auto stop adapter for the IV connector tubing and then a way to cleanse the skin. And for me I uh, really one of the uh, main differences that I can bring to the table that probably other people haven't tried uh, before this particular patient is having difficulty with IV cannulization is using some numbing because oftentimes they'll say I've been stuck six times and I will not allow anybody to stick me anymore. But if you use a little bit of lidocaine then that kind of mitigates that and they're more than happy to let you poke around in there until you find uh, the vein. And again just use a TB or an insulin syringe the smallest gauge that you have on, on staff. What I like to do is put it all together first so that that way you're not fumbling around when it's difficult and the pressure is high in the patient's room. I'll connect the saline to the blue auto lock, lure lock, and connect that to the IV tubing and flush it. And then I'll also pre-draw up the syringe of lidocaine and then have my blood work already set up and asking the nurses and phlebotomy exactly what tubes they need for the indicated studies. In terms of what angiocath to use, if you're going to look in the AC vein, then definitely use the shorter angiocath, the 30 millimeter, as you don't want it to be too long and unwieldy. But if you're going to go for the basilic vein, especially in some of our patients with more soft tissue, then I would recommend the 48 millimeter catheter because otherwise you find that when you cannulate the vein, you may be able to get a flashback, but if you use the 30 millimeter, it can easily blow and slip out, whereas with the longer 48 millimeter catheter, you're going to be able to insert it a little bit more like a pick line, uh, which is there to stay and, and going to be much more uh, robust. So let's get started. The first thing that I like to do is, uh, when I enter the room, get the patient in the right position, a comfortable position for the patient and a comfortable position for yourself. So I have the chair set up there in front of the patient and if you're right-handed, then it is often easier to cannulate the right uh, basilic vein of the patient's right arm. And then 
I put the ultrasound behind the patient so that I can look at it while I'm cannulating uh, and then I have the patient extend his or her arm and put it on a table where it's a little more comfortable. And then one thing that uh, many of us will be familiar with putting in central lines, but this is what I find even more difficult than a central line because of the smaller diameter of the vessel. And so I'll take time to sit down and don't forget to put on a tourniquet, something that we don't use with central lines. And I'll look in their antecubital fossa first uh, to see if I can uh, cannulate those veins that maybe nursing simply wasn't able to see due to uh, collapsing from dehydration or uh, just body habitus. And then I'll look at the basilic and then the cephalic. And if none of these work, you can put the patient in a little bit of T-berg and look for the EJ. Uh, the thing to note with veins is that they're compressible. They have thin walls. They're not pulsating, uh, especially when you compress them. This will augment the pulsation. And then they're larger and more ovoid. If you're having really difficulty, you can use color, and that'll uh, ensure that you're actually looking at a vein. Make sure to cleanse it, and then use the numbing, uh, like we said before. Grab the ultrasound, and make sure that you have a hand down on the patient for stabilization. And that way the, the jelly, which is quite slick, um, won't have you moving the probe around without you noticing. This is a view done in short axis. The vein on the blue phantom running with the direction of the red pen on the screen. And in short axis, this is a little bit more technically easy than in long axis. What I like to do is in this shot, you can see that we have the M mode view on, and that puts a line artificially right in the center of the screen that lines up with what most vascular access probes have an arrow in the center of the probe. If you're using short axis, then the technique to do is to find the needle tip right at the surface of the skin and follow that tip as it goes into the soft tissue. Sometimes this requires a little bit of jiggling, which patients understandably don't appreciate as it can be painful, but becomes much more tolerable with a little bit of that lidocaine. And this is a diagram taken from the Mike Stone article showing good technique. The operator has his hand down on the patient and he's using the, uh, the probe in the short axis and you can see the needle tip in the right photo. Just another picture of that. Here we have the probe in long axis and on the screen you can see that uh, the, the vein is again in the long axis, and this is a much more difficult technically to perform, but the trick is that you can actually see the needle going in the long axis plane, and that way you know that you've entered the vessel and you haven't gone through and through, and then when you actually advance the catheter, you can watch the catheter go into the vein. The reason why this is difficult is that the plane of axis that the sonograph can pick up is just about a credit card thin, and so you have to know exactly where that needle is in order to make this a success. Just make sure that you're centered on the vein and that you're not getting somewhat of a cross section. And this is another long axis approach uh, from the Mike Stone paper showing good technique and you can see that catheter going into the vessel. Sometimes if you find that you've gone into the vessel and you get a good flashback, I, you try to cannulate it and you can't, what I would do in that case is you can sometimes take out the needle and get some blood at that point. And then as you're flushing it, you can kind of float the angio in, um, which may be against a valve. And again, you'll have to be using this uh, longer um, angio cath to make that work. And then get your blood, take the tourniquet off, and place the peripheral IV. And again, these are just more uh, images from that Mike Stone paper. So here's a video that um, you can see. I, I was using the Phantom, so I'm being kind of aggressive, but you can see the tracking of the needle in the long axis and then the advancement of the catheter there. So to wrap it up, let's give you some uh, pearls and some uh, pitfalls that you might have. First, I would recommend practice when it's easy on your off time, when things are slow, so that that way you've got this skill when, when it's difficult and when it is a little bit uh, more busy in the department. 
I've had the experience where I walk into the room and tell them that I'm going to put in a, an IV and they say, oh, wow, the doctor is doing it. They must be really great at doing it, which we all know is, is laughable. Uh, next, just make sure that you have the time uh, to get it right. Make the position comfortable of the patient as well as for yourself. Uh, you sitting with the patient on the arm board and then look in that AC. Even though the nurses may have missed it, uh, it's just sometimes simply because they can't see where it is. Um, and with the ultrasound, you can. Go for more shallow and larger veins, and then use that tourniquet, which we often forget since we're more used to placing central lines. Bring something to the table that they haven't tried before, which is numbing, and that'll help with the patient's ability to tolerate it, and so they don't say they've stuck me six times and no one's touching me. Just take your time. Uh, in a critical patient, Remember that this isn't what your go-to will be. Uh, use an IO or a central line or an EJ. Uh, this is something that uh, shouldn't be done in somebody who needs access immediately. And don't have any ego about it. Sometimes I'll just grab the ultrasound, find the vessel, put it on the M mode and center it, and then, that, and then I'll have the nurse actually cannulate it because they're the professionals. They're the ones that I want putting in a catheter on myself. So I'm probably maybe a little more versed in the former, at using the ultrasound, but they're fantastic at the latter, so get them to actually place it. Some studies have shown to use the bevel down, which can uh, help with that ring down enhancement that you see. And uh, sometimes in the uh, in the long axis, go steeper than you think so that you don't run out of angiocath on those deep veins. Use the long angio on the basilic. Um, and a 20 gauge is pretty cool because you can see the flashback in the tube. Um, and then follow the tip in if you're using short, but center the needle if you're using long. Uh, one attending uses his method of uh, cannulating in the short axis, and once he gets the flashback, then he'll transition to the long axis so that he makes sure that, that he's getting the cannula actually in the vessel. Well, I appreciate your time, and uh, give us some feedback.